Hello my dear friends, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita, so good to see you. Today I have a big haul from Marshalls. It was actually a Home Goods, but I went to a Home Goods a day or two ago and I was in luck because while my Marshalls and Home Goods and TJ Maxx is here have been pretty sad for a really long time and generally don't get like a ton of candles. When it rains, it pours. And finally, all of the fall and holiday can well not holiday so much as fall and Halloween candles came out and dropped at my Marshalls. And so I found several homeworks and a couple nest candles. Um, it, I wouldn't say that it was like an entire floor set of Homeworks candles, but several. So I had a little bit of a selection and I ended up buying several of them as well as a couple Nest. So I thought I would share those with you. Um, one other, <laughs> one little thing. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I, and if you did notice but didn't say anything, bless you. I've had like a major allergic reaction and my eyes were like swollen and red and they have been for a bit. I've been trying to hide it with makeup, um, but I finally found out what it was. I thought it was just seasonal allergies because seasonal allergies in the fall hit me so hard. But actually, in addition to seasonal allergies, I think I'm also allergic to my body wash, which is something I actually mentioned on this channel, which is this, um, Trader Joe's Brazil Nut Body Wash, which is a dupe for Sol de Janeiro. And I was really excited to show that for you. I think that this is like new for them this year. Although they've had the body butter um, in years past, it was kind of a summer special. I bought so many of these. I went through almost one of them <laughs> before I finally by trial and error, process of elimination, realized that I think this is what was making me react at three o'clock in the morning. I just couldn't understand it. Like, because I, I shower at night, it seemed as though my eyes got so much worse, like when I was trying to go to bed. Um, and then I checked all the online message boards and I said, you know, is Trader Joe's shower gel, does anyone have an allergy? And, and God bless, someone said very helpfully on one of the online, you know, things, they said, uh, Trader Joe's tends to use chamomile, extract of chamomile in their shower gels. And if you are allergic to ragweed in the fall, there is a very good chance that you would react to chamomile as well. And sure enough, I looked in the list and it's got chamomile. So I quickly stopped using it and my eyes are slowly returning back to normal. For the one that I used, I am happy to say that the smell on it was great and it was ended up being more powerful than initially I thought it was going to be. So there is that. But if you, if ragweed really bothers you in the fall, think twice before grabbing Trader Joe's. Make sure that chamomile is not in the list. Um, I have their body scrub as well from that same line. This doesn't seem to have chamomile in it and I've used this for much longer than this. So I don't think that I'm reacting to this, which I'm really happy about because I really enjoyed this as well. Um, and it's possible that even if, if chamomile kind of in a mild way affects you, you might still be fine with this. I got the impression after I did some research that in the height of ragweed season, chamomile is just, it's like piling on. Chamomile is gonna affect you even more and maybe the straw that breaks the camel's back as it was for me. When it's not ragweed season, even someone like me might get away with using it and not having a whole lot of a reaction. For me personally, I'm not gonna take a chance because these allergies are killing me, killing me. Anyway, close parentheses on that public service announcement though, if ragweed bothers you. 
Um, okay, so let's talk about my haul. And the very first thing that I wanna say about it is that I encountered, although it did not pick up, several Illum candles. And I have reviewed a couple of Illum candles within the last like couple weeks. So Paloma Petal, I reviewed that one, and Terra Tabac. And I talked about their really big bestseller, which is um, Coconut Milk Mango. So when I was in that Home Goods, I noticed they had several Coconut Milk Mango candles and Paloma Petal, and even another one, which is Citrus Crush. But I don't know that you would necessarily notice them because they don't advertise themselves loudly as Illum candles. So I took a couple pictures. One of the coconut milk mangoes that is there is in this beautiful pineapple ceramic vessel. It looks like this, so beautiful. Um, and this is a particular vessel that holds 10 ounces. So it's a 10 ounce candle, a one wick. Um, you're gonna get a pretty good diameter on it though. And it's this beautiful pineapple. Illum does sell this on their website for $32. So you're getting a great deal at 10 for this pineapple. They also had a coconut milk mango in a little mini, metal tin and it's real small. I think it's about seven ounces. They had it for $7.99 and usually it's for $30. They also, I did also find a glass um, coconut milk mango. This is their Mojave glass look. They have small, medium, and large, I believe. This one is the small one and the small one is um, Oh no, I'm sorry, the small one is seven ounces, the little mini tin is 6.3. So the little mini tin is a little bit smaller. The Mojave glass is um, a strong seven ounces, but still on the small side. And that one is um, 7.99 and it is regularly 30. So I'm sorry, with the metal tin, the metal tin is much smaller, it's 6.3. And I can't remember what the price was on it. I wanna say like $3.99, something like that. Paloma Petal, I found it in that little mini 10. And then I also found it in the Mojave Glass, which is the seven ounce for $7.99. Um, and then I also found a Citrus Crush. Here's what Citrus Crush looks like. This is a little, this is their Dylan. I think it's called Dylan Ceramic Line. And again, they have like a small and a medium size this is the small size. Um, the small size is five ounces and Marshalls was selling it for $4.99. It is usually $20. Citrus Crush is very similar to Volcano Capri Blue. So not my favorite of Illum's candles, but I'm sure it will be somebody's favorite out there. So um, if you're in your Marshalls and Home Goods, I just wanted to give you a super heads up on that to check out those different like formats. If you see candles that look like that, take a second look. It may very well be a loom. And if you've been wanting to try out either Coconut Milk Mango or Smell Paloma Petal, those are great price points to do so at. All right, close parentheses. Marshalls. First of all, I have two beautiful glass um, situations here. So here's one of them, look at that. Um, and this is no more or less than their usual um, three or four wick um, design. Um, it's just in a beautiful glass with a beautiful lid. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a rubber gasket, so it does kind of slide around a great deal, but for home decor and presentation purposes, looks really beautiful. And while this may be a mislabel, Marshalls is selling it for no more than their regular Homeworks candles. So this one was $16.99 and I kind of couldn't pass it up. Although it's the same wax amount at 18 ounces, I kind of suspect that Mar that Homeworks would be wanting to sell this at a higher price point. Just given the glass, I think they would usually sell these for a bit more um, with the hobnail, but I could be wrong about that. I'm not a huge like Homeworks buyer traditionally, so I could be wrong about that. So anyway, at Marshall's, or at least at mine, 
even if it was a mistake. These are going for no more than these right here. And this is another one that I got, which is Woodland Amber, and I really liked the smell of this. Um, so none of these are like new necessarily for homeworks, but they're kind of new to me because I haven't burned them. So I'm a sucker for fig, if you know anything about me. Um, and when I smelled it, I was really happy that I'm getting a strong fig note here. Um, Bordeaux fig, I'm not really sure if by Bordeaux, it might be a specific kind of fig. Obviously there's a Bordeaux region in France and from that comes the celebrated Bordeaux wine, but I'm not really sure that there's necessarily anything boozy or wine-like about this fragrance. I'm gonna assume that it's just a type of fig. Um, so the notes here are Bordeaux fig, wild raspberry, white woods, and vetiver. And upon cold sniff, which is like robust enough, I'm getting a lot of fig and a lot of jamminess from a red berry. I think I might call it out as raspberry, but what I appreciate is that raspberry is a very strong red berry smell, and I would imagine that it would overwhelm a fig smell. And so I'm super grateful that it's not doing so here, that it's really a strong fig note. Um, because generally speaking, raspberry, a, a, an authentic raspberry botanical smell will trump a botanical fig smell. Um, someone mentioned online when I was doing a little bit of um, research on this particular scent, which is not new, that there was a currant and fig candle from Homeworks as well at one point, and that this might be a repackage or at least a very close version of currant and fig. And smelling it with that in mind, I actually do think that it smells a bit more like currant and fig than raspberry and fig. Currant and fig, we tend to have, or think of currants in terms of dried currants. They would be kind of like dry, dried cranberries. But especially if you're in Europe, um, Currant is a, a very um, familiar kind of fruit, less so than here in the United States, where it is very similar to both a blueberry and a cranberry. It's round and it's tart and it's jammy, but not quite in the same aggressive way that like a raspberry is. And for me personally, this seems a little more currant-like than raspberry-like. So it may indeed be currant and fig. Am I getting a whole lot of woods and vetiver? No. But if I smelled one of them, it would be maybe the wood. That there is something grounding underneath it. And I do think that fig notes often try to capture the, the stem and wood kind of nuances of the entire fig plant. And so in that sense, the wood that I'm smelling just really beautifully enhances and augments that fig smell. So I think it's really lovely. It is maybe a little bit more sweet than I would like in a fig candle. Would I like more wood? Would I be happy with musk? Yes. Um, but I like it, and I think it's a really good candle to burn right now-ish. In this kind of apple-ish transitional period where the deeper and darker fruits, especially like fig and plum, are really beautiful and I think maybe underestimated or underappreciated fall fruits. Okay, second one, and this will surprise everyone, including me. I went ahead and got maple rum strudel and I was on the fence with it, but it was just such a beautiful vessel and the scent was just so pleasant and so cozy and fall-like that I went for it. This is also extremely sweet. 
but there are no bakery notes, which I'm very grateful for. But for those of you who, with the strudel, were expecting some bakery notes, you will be a little disappointed. This is not a new fragrance for them, and so chances are, especially if you're a homeworks buyer or a gourmand lover, you already know about this candle and may not need any other um, introduction to it. The fragrance notes are drizzled maple, brown sugar, candied pecans, and dark rum. This would be like, you know that Bath and Body Works candle that just came out, Praline Delight, which I have not yet fired up, but I'm going to. This this to me smells like Praline Delight. And I think a lot of people who were a little disappointed with Praline Delight when it came out from Bath and Body Works were expecting this. This, I think to them would smell like Praline Delight because it is gooey. <laughs> it's sugary, gooey, caramelized, all of those things that you would associate with Praline. And there's this effusiveness about the fragrance that just this kind of like boiling over like like a like a extravagant praline volcano <laughs> that actually is a lot more in keeping with what I think a lot of people were hoping for with praline delight praline delight from Bath and Body Works again I have not fired it up but it does seem to be a little bit darker and a little bit more like muted and perhaps even a little bit more sophisticated than this particular candle. But I'm not sure that people were hoping for a sophisticated take on Praline. I think they kind of wanted this. If that is your vibe, this is your candle. There is no question. I'm not a gourmand person. I'm not a candy person. And so I was really on the fence because this is very like almost achingly sweet with the brown sugar and the maple and the pecan and the rum it takes it just into that what do i call it it grounds it just enough such that the caramel overtones of it become at least a little butterscotchy if not deeper than that and when I was smelling it, I thought to myself, yeah, I might get a little bit of rum on the bottom. And some sniffs, I was thinking, I'm actually smelling something here that might not be gourmand at all. That's more in the musky or amber, amber like category maybe. But then, then I'll smell it again and it's gone, you know? So that may or may not be but the darker elements that smelled vaguely boozy or vaguely amber finally tipped the scale and I went ahead and got it. So this one's at $16.99 and it's definitely gonna be one of those like November, early November kind of burns for sure. Like when things are truly cold, you truly want something cozy, and you're in that middle point between Halloween, which was spooky, and you've got all the candy on hand, and Thanksgiving, where there's just a cornucopia of riches in terms of culinary pleasures. Um, without it necessarily going holiday or Christmas, this is the thing. So I will probably fire that up this year in early November. And then I bought two of the regular Homeworks ones. This one I was super excited about, Woodland Amber. Um, and the and these are $16.99 as well. The fragrance notes here are amber, sandalwood, cardamom, and white patchouli. I'm not sure what white patchouli is, and it may just be conceptual in that they're trying to signal that the patchouli here is lighter and like not funky or earthy or damp. Yeah, and we all know that there are those two different kinds of patchouli. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you had me at amber, you had me at sandalwood, you had me at patchouli. Done. White or otherwise, I'm in. And then the cardamom was kind of unexpected. Now, upon smelling it, there's a, there's a freshness to this that you're just not expecting. Almost like an ozone-like freshness and sweetness. 
that's so welcome because I would just suspect with the amber, the sandalwood, the cardamom, the patchouli, you've just got something really fairly deep and heavy and maybe spicy and like, you know, like masculine leaning, that kind of thing. And I'm not prepared. I was not prepared for the lightness and brightness of this fragrance. It's like a, a high amber, you know? that really goes into at least that mid-range, you know? It hangs up. And maybe the patchouli being maybe the drier and more perfumey one is hanging up a little bit higher too. And then, and then the sandalwood is providing a nice like wood dimension for sure. So it's kind of taking it into that upper low range. Cardamom, I don't know. I do think there is something a little vaguely spicy about this, but to be honest, upon smelling it, if I had to try to identify it, I would say cinnamon rather than cardamom. And I think that's where a lot of the sweetness is coming from as well, because I just would not associate cardamom with sweetness per se. If, if there was one spice that was sweet, I would say cinnamon and or nutmeg. Yeah. At any rate, for me, it's coming across a little bit more as cinnamon or allspice. Um, so there's a warmth and there's a sweetness to it that um, doesn't feel particularly cardamom. So if you're in it for the cardamom spice, I would pause. Oh, man, it's beautiful. I have to say though, especially smelling it in conjunction with some of these other ones. It's a little retreating in terms of how it's coming across. So I am a little bit worried about throw on this. But as you well know, when you love a fragrance, you are willing to cover over a multitude of sins in terms of strength, throw, performance, etc. <laughs> Obviously there's a limit to how much grace you will show, but I'm really, really hoping that that one does something because it is so lovely, so in my wheelhouse. All right, um, Scarlet Woods is the next one. I don't know why I took off that lid before showing it to you. Scarlet Woods looks like this. Um, this one might be relatively recent, like within the last year or two years, possibly. It wasn't, it's obviously not new to this year. Um, Scarlet Woods was a real surprise. Um, so the notes on this one are Scarlet Red Woods, which is like a nonsense note because I don't think there are Scarlet Red Woods. Um, and it's just basically duplicating the title. And then Cardamom again, Clove Bud, and Vanilla. So you are thinking that you're gonna get like a really deep, like maybe a cedar note, or a birch note, and then you are expecting also like a spicy sweetness, which would be a really lovely candle. This is not that. I opened it up and I was like, oh, it's a Christmas tree. <laughs> I mean, it's just a really lovely traditional Christmas tree smell. It's fresh, it's freshly cut, it's dewy, like the needles are just green and vibrant and sappy. I mean, it is, it's a Christmas tree. I don't know that it's a whole lot more than a Christmas tree, but that's just the cold sniff. So I am gonna need to burn it and see if I'm getting a little bit more spiciness. Am I getting vanilla? Maybe. Am I getting spice? Maybe. But to be honest, that like beautiful balsam note is just taking over the whole candle in such a way that all other fragrance notes just kind of fade into the background. It's like when you get a freshly cut Christmas tree in your house and no matter what the other smells are in your house, maybe freshly baked cookies, this, that, or the other thing, all you can smell is that glorious Christmas tree for at least 24, 48 hours, and it's so gorgeous. I am gonna burn this and see if something else comes out, but I'm a sucker for a Christmas tree. 
And because of the marketing, I may bring this out before the December holidays. Again, I don't know if in the fragrance itself there's anything that should indicate that you should do that. <laughs> but I'm gonna take the marketing invitation and burn up some balsam before the holiday season, I think. So then I have two Nest candles. Um, one of them is this one, which has been around a long time in their collection, Charcoal Woods. And then this one, which was Midnight Moss and Vetiver. Yeah. So these are running at Marshall's 25 bucks, which I wasn't terribly happy about because I think in the summer they were running for 20. But I also think that the price for Nest has gone up with all the inflation nonsense, has gone up from like $40 for an eight ounce to now I think it's 48, it's close to 50. So it's kind of understandable why it seems like Marshall's is at least right now discounting these essentially 50% off that now it is $24.99 as opposed to 20. Um, but I went ahead and got it anyway. This one I was kind of on the fence about, this charcoal woods, because while it's in my wheelhouse in terms of it being a dark, um, earthy, masculine kind of scent, I'm not really sure that it's special. So the blurb says, evoke the depths of a mysterious forest with notes of smoky labdanum, patchouli, and cedar wood combined with charred birch wood and a hint of black truffle. And that's a lot of woods and patchouli. Yeah, and upon smelling it, I mean, this is basey. It's a basey candle, it's a smoky candle. Yeah, it's a woody candle. And yeah, it's a patchouli candle. And for some reason, I'm just not excited about it. Let me lift it out so you can kind of tell what it looks like too. So it's this. Um, it's just kind of a really classic look and it's a one wick black charcoal kind of wax. Um, yeah, I'm not, I mean, it doesn't like blow my mind, the aesthetic, but it's classy and it's fine. Um, yeah, and it's just a very classic like nest look. I like this. It's a very like fireside kind of candle because it's just dominated by a lot of smoke and a lot of wood. But the wood is, I would say it's mostly smoke. With, you know, you've got the patchouli underneath, almost comes across a little bit cologne-y. There's like a perfume-ish note. This candle is not very fresh. It has just a very like, I hate to say stale, because I don't know that it's stale. It's just not dynamic and it's not fresh. It's just a very heavy, like wood, smoke, vetiver slash patchouli, almost leaning into the cologne rate realm. And it doesn't, it needs an element that, that will give us some sort of relief at the very least. What do they say, truffle? I mean, truffle might have been able to do that. It almost needs, I don't know what it needs. But for me, it's just not a dynamic fragrance. That said, I've wanted to try it for a very long time. I will at this price point. Um, and maybe upon being burned, it like comes to life. I don't know. It's, it's well liked. I would definitely say this is a very masculine candle though. It's, I mean, it's apropos the marketing, the wax color, it is a dark masculine candle. And I don't know how lively it is, but we shall see upon it being burned. Like Apotheke does candles like this, but I feel like they have a little bit more intrigue to them generally. I don't know. This one, on the other hand, was much better. And I believe this might be a fairly new candle for them. This Midnight Moss and Vetiver. Um, so here's what it looks like. This one I was excited about. Look at that. It's a beautiful hunter green. Look at that wax. 
Oh yes, and this is a beautiful fall burn. Well, this one has a great deal of earthiness and they're in the quote unquote wilderness collection, both of them. This one has sweetness, this one has complexity, this one has a dynamism. So the notes listed on this one, or the blurb rather, is walk among the woodland trails at midnight. I don't know that midnight is crucial. Walk along the mid wood woodland trails at midnight and inhale the earthy aromas of wild tree moss, crushed patchouli leaves, and vetiver, enhanced by an unexpected hint of bergamot. So here you have woodland trails, and while it doesn't call out wood or trees, with the exception of tree moss, I feel like I'm getting some tree. It's like a coniferous tree, and it's just the needles. It does have a very subdued kind of um, muted coniferous, like a dried, and could almost be something like juniper. And yes, a great deal of moss, perhaps even some earth. And in the patchouli here, I would say the patchouli goes a little bit earthier, but I would say that this fragrance is not damp. Despite the moss note and despite the earthy patchouli, it still has a dryness to it, which I think is gonna appeal to a lot of people. There is also, ooh. oh man, it's almost smoky, almost, but not quite. And I don't know that I would say vetiver per se, but I think in addition to the patchouli, there's something that's almost a little sage-like. And there is a sweetness to it. And I don't know where the sweetness is coming from. And they say bergamot. And on paper, of course, you should immediately just kind of, um, uh, you know, take warning. <laughs> When you've got all the traditional masculine elements with bergamot, it just usually goes in a cologne, standard cologne kind of direction. This does not. I mean, this is very much an outdoor candle, not a body care. Um, actually, charcoal woods leans closer to body care. Like I said, there was a little bit of a cologne perfume element um, just right underneath of everything else. So this one leans a little bit more in that direction. This one doesn't lean at all in that direction, at least on cold sniff. But it does have a sweetness that could be a dried bergamot, but there's a little bit of a coolness in it too, which if I didn't know better, I would say maybe some dried mint, frankly, or eucalyptus, without it being like really menthol-like. But it's a sweetness too, like a spearmint or something. But mostly you have the like very like warm smell of the patchouli and of the moss. It's very warm, very warm, very dry. So though, although it doesn't smell like cedar, it has that like cedar-like dimension in that it's rich, full, warm, dry, woody or wood-like. Yeah, it's lovely. It is lovely and I'm really excited about this one. So both of these are on the Nest website and this one on the Nest website says new on top of it. So it may be a relatively new fragrance for them given that there's no other season that it would probably come out except fall. I'm even wondering if it's new to this particular year. I don't know. At any rate, um, you can get it regular price, of course, on the Nest website, and I will link all of that below, but keep your eyes peeled. How great would it be to pick one up at like a Marshalls or a Home Goods? My friends, that's what I've got for you. Thank you for your patience. I'm really happy. These are nice. I've gotten a lot of sugar here from Homeworks. <laughs> I've gotten very deep masculine here from Nest. Um, and I just feel really good. 
If you've had a sad Marshalls experience for a very long time and you're jealous of everybody who's like found all the special things, and I, I feel you, I'm the same way. I keep going to like my TJ Maxx being like, guys, are you just not considered like a cool TJ Maxx? Why is it that you don't get all the special things? I would love to get a few more Kringles down here, but maybe they're just showing up in the New England area. I haven't really gotten a whole lot here, although a couple of them appeared in the summer. Um, but yeah, if you've had a sad experience, just be patient and maybe keep going because we are now in the heart of the fall season. And even at these discount retailers, they want to have a really robust like holiday slash fall, you know, display and offering for everybody coming in. So you have a good chance of maybe getting some cool new candles. The woman at the register, when I was, she was ringing me up, she's like, oh my gosh, I've been gone for like two days. And then I come back and I haven't even seen all of these. It happens overnight. It really does. So if you've got the time and you've got the commitment, just keep checking it out. All right. I will link below everything that I can. Um, I, don't think that these homework ones, for the most part, are available on either the shop.com, although there are a couple that are available, I think, on QVC. I even put, oh, this Bordeaux fig one is actually on clearance at QVC. It's like a, um, a pair of them for like 32 bucks, which by the time you pay shipping and handling is pretty much what you would spend on this if you encountered it in Marshalls, but you would have to buy two. So I'll link that too. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining me.